Right now, almost two-thirds of Americans are overweight, and by 2030, more than half our population may be clinically obese. Childhood obesity has tripled, and most of them will grow up to be overweight as well. The United States may be in the midst of raising the first generation since our nation's founding that will have a shorter predicted lifespan than that of the previous generation. The food industry blames inactivity. You just need to move more. But what is the role of exercise in the treatment of obesity? There is considerable debate in the medical literature today about whether physical activity has any role whatsoever in the epidemic of obesity that's swept the globe since the 80s. The increase in calories per person is more than sufficient to explain the U.S. epidemic of obesity. In fact, if anything, the level of physical activity over the last few decades has actually gone up in both Europe and North America. This has important policy implications. Yes, we still need to exercise more, but the priorities for reversing the obesity epidemic should focus on the overconsumption of calories. To work off the increased caloric intake, which for kids is like an extra can of soda and small fries compared to what they were eating back in the 70s, and for adults, like an extra Big Mac a day, to work that off, we'd have to walk like two, mo two hours a day, seven days a week. So exercise can prevent weight gain, but the amount required to prevent weight gain may be closer to you know, twice the current recommendations. Public health advocates have been experimenting with including this kind of information, the fast food menu labeled with calories and the number of miles to walk to burn those calories appeared to be most effective in influencing the selection of lower calorie meals. Now, exercise alone may have a small effect, and that small effect can make a you know, big difference on a population scale. A 1% decrease in BMI nationwide might prevent millions of cases of diabetes and heart disease, thousands of cases of cancer. Yeah, but why don't we lose more weight from exercise? It may be because we're just not doing it enough. I mean, the, the small magnitude of weight loss observed from the majority of exercise interventions, you know, where they make people exercise, may be primarily due to how low the doses are of the prescribed exercise. People tend to overestimate how many calories are burned by physical activity. Uh, for example, there's, uh, there's this myth that a bout of sexual activity burns a few hundred calories. So hey, you could get a side of fries with that. But if you actually hook people up and measure, en measure energy expenditure during the act, and your study subjects don't get too tangled up with all the wires and hoses, though it may be nearly the metabolic equivalent of calisthenics, given that the average bout of sexual activity only lasts about six minutes, a young man might expend approximately 21 calories during sexual intercourse. Of course, he would have spent roughly one-third that just lying around watching TV, just basal metabolism. So the incremental benefit is plausible. All right, guys. So many people are stuck on these low-fat diets or like, I can't eat anything. I'm going to buy fat-free everything. And there's a couple things that like I do like to buy, like low-fat or fat-free and whatever. Like, it's okay, but I'm just saying like, Fat is not going to make you fat. I promise you that. Like when it comes to gaining weight or losing weight, it's all about calories in versus calories out. So whether that's extra calories you're getting in through protein, fats, or carbs, if you get extra calories in, then you burn that. That is what is going to lead to extra energy intake, which is going to end up in extra fat. And so whatever your body isn't burning and isn't needing for like muscular like activity and you're just your body's work, that is what gets stored as fat. And so eating like nuts or peanut butter or any kind of fat doesn't make you fat. It's extra calories in total that your body doesn't use up because then it puts it into the stores. So, going along with that, Mythbuster broken. Fat does not make you fat, guys. Don't fear the fat. Don't FF. Don't F. Don't fear the fat. Don't, I'm trying to come up with something catchy, but it's not really working. So, if you're given the option to, I don't know, have some real peanut butter versus PB2, don't get me wrong, I like PB2 as well, but don't be like, 
Ah, I have to choose PB2 because honestly, I eat a lot more PB2 than I would real peanut butter just because it's not as filling. Fat really does lead to feeling full a lot quicker than eating carbs does. And so, even though PB2 is lower in fat and total calories than real peanut butter, I usually eat a lot less peanut butter than PB2. So in just that example, like say you're only gonna have like one to two tablespoons of real peanut butter or you're gonna end up binge eating on like a cup of PB2 because it's just not really satisfying you, the better and healthier option for you is going to be the real peanut butter. So just keep that in mind and don't let your mind give you these fear foods of anything just because it's high in fat because fat does not make you fat. All right, hope you guys liked this video. In the comments below, let me know what next question or myth you want me to answer here. And yeah, I'll let you know, fact or fiction Monday. <laughs> so in the comments below, let me know what you think might be true, might not be true. I will do my research, not just Google search and come to the first answer I come to. I actually do research on these things, slash I'm a nutrition major, and now I'm getting my master's in sports nutrition, so I have a lot of stuff up here, or at least I'd like to think so. So, comment below, click the thumbs up if you like this video, and subscribe if you aren't already. Love you guys all, and really, really, really do love all the support you give me, so thank you so much for that, and until next time, bye. I just wanted to do a short video on the top 10 foods that I've been loving lately because the last time I made a video like this you guys really liked it and so I'm gonna do new foods even though the other foods I said last time are still foods I love um, like uh, I don't know quest bars and um Hey everyone, I'm Vicki Justice, bikini model from Miami, Florida, and today we're going to do a super sexy booty workout. It's going to get you really sexy legs and a nice round booty. So, once you're ready, let's begin with our first exercise. So, we're going to start off by doing 20 in and out jumping squats. So, you're going to basically jump from a wide stance to a closed down squat. So, you're going to go wide and then in. This is 20. Make sure you're really sitting your butt back. <sighs> All right, that was 20. So now if you need, um, take some rest time, catch your breath. So, uh, see if rest time is needed. And next we're gonna be doing 40 reverse lunges. So, you're gonna hold on to something for balance, so I'm gonna use this bench here. So, um, you're going to go down into a lunge, really go as far back as you can, come back up, and then do the other side. Just so make sure you really go low. Keep your weight on your heel. Really step back as far as you can. Make sure your knees not passing your toes in the front. Alright, that's 40. So now if you need, take a break, catch your breath. Next, you're going to do 30 bouncing lunges each leg. So you're going to go down into a lunge. You can still hold on to something for balance. 
And you're going to bounce it 30 times. Keep most of your energy heel on the front leg. You should really feel this in your butt. I'll see you 30 on the other side. Go down to lunge and begin. Keep going. Stay low. Come up. All right, now again, catch your breath. You can put the bench to the side. What we're going to be doing next is 30 close stance hopping squats. So you're going to be with your legs pretty close together. So it's really um, target your butt. You're going to go down into a squat and hop up. So make sure you go as low as you can. Stand hopping squats. So make sure now you take some rest time. Catch your breath. If you need more rest time, just pause the video and take the time you need. Next, we're going to do um, some more reverse lunges. So you can bring your bench or stool back. Once you've caught your breath, then go into a lunge and switch. Make sure you go really low. Got a few more. 